Nervous. Very, very dreadfully nervous I had been and am. But why will you say that I am mad? The disease had sharpened my senses, not destroyed, not dulled them. Above all was the sense of hearing acute. I heard all things in the heaven and in the earth. I heard many things in hell. How then am I mad? Listen and observe how healthily, how calmly I can tell you the whole story. It is impossible to say how first the idea entered my brain. But once conceived, it haunted me day and night. Object there was none. Passion there was none. I loved the old man. He had never wronged me. He had never given me insult. For his gold I had no desire. I think it was his eye. Yes, it was this. He had the eye of a vulture. A pale blue eye with film over it. Whenever it fell upon me, my blood ran cold. And so, by degrees, very gradually, I made up my mind to take the life of the old man, and thus rid myself of the eye forever. Now to this point, you fancy me mad. Madmen know nothing. But you should have seen me. You should have seen how wisely I proceeded, with what caution, with what foresight, with what dissimulation I went to work. I was never kinder to the old man than during the whole week before I killed him. Every night, about midnight, I turned the latch of his door and opened it, oh so gently. I did these very same proceedings for seven long nights, every night just at midnight. But I found the eye always closed, and so it was impossible to do the work, for it was not the old man who vexed me, but his evil eye. Upon the eighth night I was more than usually cautious in opening the door. Never before that night had I felt the extent of my own powers, of my sagacity. I could scarcely contain my feelings of triumph. To think that there I was, opening the door, little by little, and he not even to dream of my secret deeds or thoughts. <laughs> Who's there? I kept still and said nothing. For a whole hour I did not move a muscle. He was still sitting up in the bed, listening. Uh. I knew that groan. It was the groan of mortal terror. It was not a groan of pain or of grief. It was the low, stifled sound that arises from the bottom of the soul when overcharged with awe. Hello, is anybody there? After waiting a long time, perhaps an hour or so without hearing him lie down, I decided to turn on the flashlight. It was open, wide open, and I grew furious as I gazed upon it. I saw it with perfect distinctness, all a dull blue, with a hideous veil over it that chilled the very marrow in my bones. And have I not told you that what you mistake for madness is but over acuteness of the sense? Now, I say there came to my ears a low, dull, quick sound. I am nervous. So very nervous. And now at the dead hour of the night, amid the dreadful silence of that old house, so strange a noise as this excited me to uncontrollable terror. Yet for some minutes longer I refrained and stood still. Until... Finally, the old man was dead. When I moved my hand from the pillow to his heart, 
I could feel his life no more. He was dead. If you still think me mad, you will think so no longer as you see my genius in the placement of the body. There stood two men who introduced themselves as detectives. A shriek had been heard by a neighbor during the night. Suspicion of foul play had been aroused. Information had been logged at the police office, and they, the detectives, had been dispersed to search the premises. The shriek, I told them, was my own in a dream. The old man, I mentioned, was absent in the country. I took my visitors all over the house. I bade them search, search well. I led them all over the house. The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them. I was singularly at ease. They sat, and while I answered cheerily, they chatted of familiar things. I felt myself getting pale and wished them gone. My head ached, and I fancied a ringing in my ears. But still they sat and still chatted. The ringing became more distinct. It continued and became more distinct. I talked more freely to get rid of the feeling, but it continued and gained definiteness, until, at length, I found that the noise was not within my ears. The sound increased, and what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound. That sound, it grew louder and louder. How is it possible they did not hear it? Almighty God! No, no, they heard, they suspected, they knew. They were making a mockery of my horror. This I thought and this I think. But anything was better than this agony. Anything was more tolerable than this derision. I could bear those hypocritical smiles no longer. I felt that I must scream or die. And now, again, hark, louder, 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 louder! Villains, mock me no more. I admit the deed. Dig up the crawl space. There, there, it is the beating of his hideous heart. 